Around the world, the $100 billion porn industry has more viewers than Amazon, Netflix, and Twitter combined. American estimates say 12% of all internet websites are pornographic. 70% of men aged 18 to 24 watch porn at least once a month. 93% of boys and 62% of girls in college saw porn during adolescence. The average age of first exposure is 11 years old and one in 10 kids under 10 years old has seen porn. I wanted to just have this complete irrefutable leviathan of a, of a, of a dissertation, which is why I use that word um, against it because, and literally like it, it is irrefutable. I mean, it's just all evidence. My extrapolation is when I get into the sort of like, they're doing this because they want you weak, which I do believe, but I, I can't prove that necessarily, but everything else is completely objectively true. Our minds and our bodies have not evolved at the same speed at which our technology has evolved. And so you have situations where 12 year old boys, well, the average age of exposure is 11. So we'll just go with 11. 11 year old boys are using Instagram or they're using TikTok. And there's sort of this pipeline that no one talks about where they'll see, you know, this provocative material. And then, you know, what are they going to do? Google it? Obviously, like, you know, we've all been there and you're young, you're curious and you Google it and you find these like very hardcore websites and it literally rewires your neurochemistry, especially if you're at a younger age to just totally addict you, um, perhaps irreparably, depending on the age that you start and the intensity of the addiction that you develop. With children, not only does the porn industry target young minds, getting them hooked at a young age, but it targets young bodies to use as content as well. Between 2005 and 2009, the Association of Sites Advocating Child Protection, or the ASACP, reported that child pornography was hosted on servers located in all 50 United States. A year later in 2010, Pope Benedict at the time stated, There is a market in child pornography that seems in some way to be considered more and more normal by society. One aspect of child pornography often overlooked is its connection to human trafficking, which, according to Homeland Security, is the use of force, fraud, or coercion to obtain some type of labor or commercial sex act. With porn in general, its equality to prostitution is often overlooked. Both porn and prostitution always consist of sexual acts for money. That is the essence of the industry. So every single time porn produced by the industry is viewed, it is at the very least prostitution. In the US, if the child is under 18 years old, or if somebody is forced or coerced into the porn, this is sex trafficking. And it is impossible for the viewer to know if this is the case. Despite professional porn being either the crime of sex trafficking or prostitution, 36%, almost four out of every 10 Americans, believe it is morally acceptable. I'm not surprised that so many people think porn is morally acceptable. The producer of this show just handed me the stats here, they gave me the entire poll. I mean, birth control is at 90%, uh, divorce is at 77%, and so on and so forth. This country has gone so far with its understanding of sexual morality that it just finds all kinds of perversions and deviancies completely acceptable. I think porn is so addictive now because number one, it's anonymous. So no one knows you're doing it. Number two is that it's free. You just have internet access, so it's super easy to get. And number three, it's an escape. It's an escape into a fantasy world. Jesus teaches that if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Adultery from God's point of view because you're his spouse. So if you just give yourself over to porn and all these fantasies and lust, you're committing those things in your heart. You're participating in whatever it is you're watching in your heart. So you're guilty of all those crimes. And really, ultimately, you're cheating on God. The online porn industry is predominantly run by the company MindGeek. Headquartered in Quebec, Canada, MindGeek owns dozens of porn companies. Pornhub and Brazzers, just to name a few. MindGeek, which generates well over 115 million visits per day, originates with a man named Fabian Tillman. It's this young man called Fabian uh, who's like a tech nerd in Brussels, and he has the idea to get rich from giving the world free porn. So free streaming porn. In the late 1990s, Tillman created Nats, or Next Generation Affiliate Tracking Software. His software tracked user clicks and allowed companies to customize and run their affiliate programs exactly how they choose. This was one of the first pieces of software that made it possible for website owners to profit from advertisements hosted on their sites. 
Horn companies picked up on this and started working with Tillman so they could implement NATS for their websites. I relatively soon uh, started working with lots of different people and I got to know the industry quite well. The when you say the industry, are we talking the hosting industry or the other industry? Uh, the, 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 in general, the porn industry. I decided to see if I can uh, buy some uh, well-working assets uh, and see if I can optimize them and, and make more money with them. In 2005, YouTube was invented, allowing anybody to upload their own videos and content for free. Tillman, who by that time already owned many subscription-based porn companies, quickly caught on to YouTube's idea, and free porn took over the internet about two years later. People no longer needed to pay for porn. Between 2007 and 2013, I built uh, the company Manwin, uh, which today is called MindGeek. It still exists, it's still there, it's still as big as it was when I sold it. Uh, not much changed in it, but uh, yeah. And this company is pretty much the biggest player in porn online and offline today also. St. Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, he says, which means the love of money is the root of all evil, or you could translate, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils, because it's in the plural. So it's not that it, the only sin is the love of money, but he's saying that the love of money is a huge sin that leads to all kinds of evils. Ultimately, St. Paul is echoing our Lord's own words. He said, you cannot love both God and mammon. And he says, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So that's the real sin. If, you're, if you love money and you're going after money, you love that and that's the treasure in your heart and it's replacing God. Earlier this year, MindGeek was sued for $80 million for sex trafficking. 40 women said Pornhub, owned by MindGeek, partnered and profited from sex trafficking operations. Sex trafficking and the porn industry go hand in hand. A study conducted in nine countries revealed that nearly a full half of sexually exploited women said porn was made of them while they were being sold for sex. On top of this, there is overwhelming research showing the relationship between porn and violence. One in particular looked at the content of popular pornographic videos and found, of the 304 scenes analyzed, 88.2% contained physical aggression. It is very important that we need to find a way to make sex work a safe environment. And in, in my view, the only way to achieve this is to give them as enough choices and safe work environments, which can only be, be achieved by making it a fully legal uh, a job. And therefore, the career choice is important that it is available because it will not go away. The natural explanation for sort of what we touched on earlier with the neurochemistry can also be corroborated here with the spiritual explanation, which I think would probably even be more important, but like when your brain is indulging in those things and it has that sort of uh, safety mechanism to prevent you from overindulging, that doesn't just manifest with like pornography consumption, that manifests with everything in your life that would, that would trigger that sort of pleasure response. So whether that's driving with the windows down, listening to your favorite song, getting coffee from your favorite coffee shop, all of that will then become less pleasurable to you and you will literally begin to exist as this sort of numb and pacified zombie in the world which then would act as a good substantiation for the spiritual explanation, which would be that when you do that, the devil is laughing at you and you are indulging in things that are sinful and you are drifting away from God and you are losing yourself, you're losing your spirit, you're losing your mind and you're losing your relationship with God, all of which are gifts to you not to be taken for granted.